Welcome to From the Mind of Christine McConnell. This will be a monthly video series where I create and document unusual projects that I've dreamt up. I plan to feature nearly any kind of craft you can imagine, all the way from cake decorating to possibly even making my own shoes from scratch. This month I plan on tackling something a little outside of my wheelhouse, which is furniture reupholstery. I've always loved the idea of owning one of those old pull-out couches. So when I found one on Craigslist for only $100, I thought it would be the perfect fit for a guest room that I just recently renovated. My only issue was that the color of the couch didn't quite go with the room, so I'm going to strip off the old fabric and rework the skeleton a little bit, doing some woodworking. I always try to research things as well as I can before I start a project, and one of the best tips that I found on YouTube while researching this one was using a butter knife as sort of a starting point to pry off those larger pieces, and it turned out to be an amazing tip. Before I could remove all of the fabric, I had to take out the mechanism of the pull-out bed, which was actually pretty simple. After removing the pull-out bed, it was pretty straightforward to take off the rest of the fabric, but it did require quite a bit of elbow grease because there were so many staples. So now that the skin's been removed, I think I'm gonna work on the skeleton a little bit. At this point, we really could just refinish it with fabric and it would look really pretty and it's not too difficult, but I like to challenge myself and I feel like the shape of this is a little bit boxy and I wanna give it a little bit more of a curve. What I'm gonna do is mark one side first. I'm gonna take a jigsaw, cut it out, and then take that piece and go around all the other sides, pencil mark it so it's identical, and then I'm gonna cut all of them out. And then when I reupholster it, it'll give it a nice bend right here. Now, as for the top section, I think I wanna bring up this a little bit and have it dip in the middle, and I'll be doing some woodworking around that later. So to tackle this part, I'm actually gonna to have to strip off and figure out how I'm going to reshape that. At the moment, I'm still not entirely sure but I'm sure once the foam comes off, I'll have a better idea. All right, so I've got that cut back now, as you can see, there's a nice little curve to it, um, which should enhance the silhouette. And now I'm gonna start on this guy. This is a little bit of a tricky project as far as I'm not sure what's gonna, what it's gonna look like once I peel off this foam, but I just know that it's pretty much gonna be completely restructured on the top part. So we'll see how this works out. Let's cross our fingers. In order to create the curve that I wanted on the back of the couch, several of the springs had to be removed first. I was able to reuse all of the springs that I had to take out for the center.
I'm pretty jazzed with how that first part worked out. It was really the part that was intimidating me the most. So I'm pretty happy to see that the shape worked out good. I feel like we've got a lot of support. My next step is basically to tear off all this old padding and replace it with fresh new stuff. Another thing I think I wanna do is there's something called a tufted button. It's basically just a button that will pull through taut in a few places and just give it kind of an old fashioned look. Obviously that wasn't part of the original couch, but like I said, I want to be dialing the couch back in time a little bit. So anything I can do to add to that. I installed strips of wood on the back side so I would have something to attach my buttons to. Now that the couch is reupholstered, I'm gonna be adding some wood accents along the edges and back. And the way I'm going to do that is, in some instances, I'll just be holding the wood against the back of the couch to get the shape that I need. And in other instances, I'll be sketching out a design on cardstock, cutting that out and patterning it onto the wood.
So now I'm on to the next step. I've cut out all of my wood pieces and now I'm ready to start doing all of the fine detail and sculpting. I'm gonna use a Dremel tool with a variety of attachments and tips to sculpt out a design. But before I get going on that, I'm gonna show you how I draw the design first. And then it's basically just a matter of subtraction to achieve sort of a three-dimensional look from the wood. And it's pretty fun. Like this is one of my favorite parts of any project. So because I get to sit down and relax. Because I used poplar, which is so wonderful for carving, I had to be careful about how I was gonna go about staining it as it can take the stain a little too strongly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is dilute some acrylic paint in some water and shade in the areas that I want to have the most depth. Once that's set, I'm going to shellac all of my pieces and then tint them with a little bit of a stain, which I'll blot up. And then once that's completely dry, I'll go over with a final coat of a clear shellac.
I would have loved to have showcased the making of these pillows, but unfortunately, my cameraman escaped from his cage that day. Thank you so much for watching. I've recently created a Patreon account in order to fund the making of this series. The link is in the description below. Any contribution is tremendously helpful in the making of more episodes, and additional content will be created for those who subscribe. Thank you again, and I'll see you next month.